Hello everyone. So I was away on a trip for the past two weeks. You might have noticed that there were no there were no videos for the last two weeks. I had mentioned this before I had gone, and uh, it was quite a fruit, fruitful trip. And uh, um, yeah, it it was quite wonderful. You know, I'd, I'd been to different cities in India. Uh, it, it was a work related thing. And uh, now that I'm back, I'm back to these videos uh, again. You know, with a daily frequency as much as possible. So let's get started with today's highlights. To get started, the first one from the molecule of Mo. Although, <clears throat> although we think of do domination as an active, even aggressive activity, it doesn't have to be. Dopamine doesn't care how something is ob obtained; it just wants to get what it wants. So, an agentic relationship can be entirely passive. For example, when a manager running an employee meeting gets the outcome he wants by keeping quiet. I'm not an expert on neuroscience and everything, so you know I don't think I can elaborate this uh, any better than what the highlight already says. So, yeah, let's move on. Factfulness: We must all try hard not to not to generalize across incomparable groups. We must all try hard to discover the hidden sweeping generalizations in our logic. They are very difficult to discover. But when presented with new evidence, we must always be ready to question our previous assumptions and reevaluate and admit if we were wrong. Again, I think this highlight pretty much covers all the aspects, you know, generalization across in incomparable, incomparable groups, and um, we we have this tendency of thinking, uh, you know, like not being able to distinguish apples and oranges at many times, and uh, we we jump to generalizations because it's easy because it simplifies and. Um, it's a property of our brain to try and compress all the information. It is one of the survival mechanisms. It is, by the way, how uh, a measure of intelligence and how well we can compress. But uh, because our brains have a tendency to compress information, we sometimes compress information across incomparable groups, and that's where generalization kicks in. So. Uh, I'm I'm sure it can be categorized in a bias, although I can't really recall what what bias this might be. Uh, but like I said, this other, otherwise this highlight says it all about generalization. So we'll move on. Okay, this is from an article. It seems um, perhaps the most important thing to consider is that if you don't actively think about what future you will be doing and how to get from where you are to where you need to be, then future you will then future you will look look a lot like present you. Right, this highlight it's it's basically talking about deliberation. You know, a deliberate activity of, you know, whatever your future you is, you know, where you want to be, where you plan to be. And if there is no such plan, if if you're not thinking about it, um, you know, what does this say? Yeah, if you don't actively think about future you and how to get there, there won't be any meaningful difference between what you are, like who you are right now, and who you need to be in the future. So, I think that's about it. Let's move on. Think again. The objective is not to be a leader or a follower, but a guide. Miller and Rolnick liken it to hiring a tour guide in a foreign country. We don't want her to order us around, but we don't want her to follow us around either. I'm missing the context of like this particular. The highlight is, you know, it is pretty clear in itself. But uh, you know, what is the context? I, I can't really recall. It's been a while since I read the book. So, yeah, uh, let's move on. As a man thinker. Circumstances do not shape us so much as they reveal us. As the master of our thoughts, we are the authors authors of our environments. Okay, so I think this is pretty revealing. Well, I mean, okay, not, no pun intended, but um, circumstances <coughs> circumstances they just reveal who we are, and. Um, like like they say, you know, sometimes these circumstances they are a test, and they don't, as in they, they don't not shape us, but they are more it you know a tool of revealing who we are really, and um, this you know this book the way it is written it's a very short book it's it's kind of uh, you know a thought after thought uh, so these two sentences may seem you know seem quite. Uh, quite disparate but uh, you know yeah they go in a flow and of course in the larger context so yeah let's move on 
Okay, this is from a supplemental highlight from this book, The Midnight Library. You don't have to understand life; you just have to live it. Okay, I'm. Um, this highlight, I remember. It's uh, you know, it's where the main character, the protagonist. I'm forgetting her name, but uh, it's it's about you know where she has to choose all of these multiple books from the library. You know, each book is a possible life she could have lived, and. Um, she's trying to understand okay how do i pick and the response was you don't have to understand it you know you don't have to understand life you just have to live it and that's how you understand it so really yeah it, it's a poignant quote uh, in this context but you know the book on large didn't really appeal to me that much so let's move on cues the eyebrow raise is the fastest way to show interest and curiosity and capture int- attention Okay, the eyebrow raises. You know, when when for example, you're suddenly interested in something and you raise your eyebrows, uh, like you know, you open your eyes wide. That's the fastest way to show interest and curiosity and capture attention. Uh, you know, uh, I'm forgetting which cue this is. This falls under, but yeah, again, like this highlight covers it all. So there's not much for me to say. Okay, another supplemental highlight. the alchemist the secret of happiness is to see all the marvels of the world and never to forget the drops of oil on the spoon yeah this is definitely a part of some fable in it you know about um, but i can't recall it's been a while since i read this and i have not really highlighted any you know like this was way before i started using read read wise but um, yeah you know i don't really have the context of saying that you know i mean if you have read this book recently you might know better than me Okay, the molecule of more again. Dopamine is not meant to be an enduring res- reservoir of joy. By shaping the brain to make surprising events predictable, dopamine maximizes resources as it is supposed to do. But in the process, by eliminating surprise and extinguishing reward prediction error, it suppresses its own activity. So this highlight is kind of explaining how dopamine is kind of a self-regulating, a self-regulating activity. So while Uh, when you are surprised initially there is a dopamine shot and you feel elated you know that's that's what reward prediction error means that you predicted that there would no there would not be any reward but you got a reward and that makes you feel happy ecstatic and that's the dopamine effect and uh, you know like if that happens enough number of times you stop caring about it uh, like we are, we are, we know this phenomenon we it's 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 not new to us and that the what's really happening is dopamine is suppressing its own activity in the long run so that it's not really being fired again and again because now it's becoming regular thing it's not it's not a new novel thing over there uh, and i think this goes in the section you know uh, section with uh, uh, you know where the author is describing effects of drugs on how uh, on the dopaminic system and where the drug kind of keeps firing dopamine you know there is no suppression and it, like you know uh, thereby it keep like i mean because the drug needs to kind of like generate that hit every time it it keeps increasing the baseline which means that um eventually you know if if uh, like if we regularly use these drugs uh, uh this uh, i'm forgetting what these drugs are called but if you regularly if you're regularly using these drugs it in- keeps incre- increasing your dopaminic baseline which means that you'll be less and less surprised by the regular rewards that's happening around you you know so like it means that nothing else makes you happy anymore nothing except that other drug shot which guarantees that will deliver a do- dopamine shot so that's the cycle of addiction that, that this is uh, you know this highlight is from that section of the book <clears throat> um this is a tweet so okay this is just uh, the first part of the tweet we'll have a weekly one on one i'll never cancel this meeting but you can cancel it wherever you like whenever you like it's your time so uh, yeah i mean uh, managers and one on ones i do believe you know one on ones is one on one is the greatest tool in a manager's uh, toolbox really so yeah it's um, and weekly one on ones you know it's kind of that's the frequency that i try to optimize for but anyway you know like i i think uh, if i go start talking about one on one i'll digress a lot but uh, maybe that's a subject for another video i suppose down the line but for now i think we are done with the highlights uh, you know in interest of time i'm not going over here today it's uh, it's under 10 minutes you know which is a good thing you know i just got back and a lot of highlights were just skipped so there's not much content today but um, 
yeah i think it's it's a perfect thing for uh, you know my day back i just got back and trying to you know get back to my schedule but uh, yeah uh, for now thank you for watching and have a good day